Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, give me just a second to turn this lamp on over here. Just a moment, please. And God bless each one of you in Jesus' name. Um, you're going to keep your notes. And we will be going over all this in the barn uh, Friday evening. So look at the top left corner, temptations versus burdens. Okay, this is what you're going to write down. And I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and you can pause the video and think about it. Uh, my question to you is, why does God allow suffering and pain in your life? Because that's your question. Why do you allow suffering and pain in my life if you're God? And I'm going to ask you, think about that. Think about this. How do you handle suffering and pain in your life? I want you to think of an instance of very significant personal suffering. What do you believe God was doing at that time? Just pause and think about that. Okay, I gave you a couple things to pause and think about. So, let's start off with what is a burden? You want to pause the video and answer that in the comment section. What is a burden? <clears throat> what is a burden? Okay, you should have paused and gave me some kind of answers and, and just leave it up there, okay? A burden is something that's out of your control. It's difficult or very hard to deal with, but it's not in your control. A burden, as I see in the top left up here, are difficult events that you cannot control, like death, loss of a loved one. Something like that. You can't control that kind of thing. Burdens uh, weigh us down physically, mentally, and emotionally. They weigh you down, man. And we can bring burdens upon ourselves, right? By choosing to walk after the flesh. Means after your sin nature. Your soul. Your personality. Your character. Your behavior. Okay? You can read about that in Galatians 6, 7-8. Uh, sin will usually pretty much always bring with it some very unpleasant and overwhelming consequences. Amen? Outside forces can also place those burdens on us too. So these imposed burdens include things like <clears throat> job loss, family betrayal, um, infidelity, illnesses, death of a loved one, disabilities, natural disasters. I can go on and on and on, right? Okay, but a, but a burden as you see up here, is not the same thing as temptations. There's a difference there. Do you know what temptations are? I want you to write this down. Temptations are mental attacks from Satan who uses the world and our flesh to distract us from believing God's truths and living out his life. Whose life? Jesus's. You and I are supposed to live out Jesus's life, the remainder of it. Yeah? According to uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God will not allow us to experience a temptation that we cannot bear or we can't escape from, in other words. So with burdens, God gives us, they don't give us no kind of promise about a burden. That he won't let us have more burdens than we can bear. No, he doesn't say that. He said he won't allow us more temptations than we can bear. That we will be able to escape them. These burdens we may, we may not be able to escape. Instead, Jesus promises that we will have trouble. Oh, this don't sound good, does it? This, this don't sound like mercy and everything. That Well, it is. Jesus said... You're going to have tribulation. You will have. He promises us trouble. John 16, 33, if you want to go look at it yourself. You know what? He even allows burdens beyond our ability to bear. Pause and read 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9. Okay. You know what burdens bring, y'all? They bring suffering. Do you know what suffering is? 
Suffering is the pain. You want to write this down. Suffering is the pain that we experience from the loss of something that we value very, very much. When you lose something you value very, very much, oh, baby, it's painful. You, you ask what type of suffering, what type of uh, suffering do burdens bring? Well, suffering can take form in many ways. The spiritual, like oppression from demons, um, mental anguish, you know what that is? Like worry and, and uh, anxiety and that hyperactive mind. Um, it can bring emotional, like uh, depression and fear and anger. It can bring physical like high blood pressure, headaches, stuff like that. Suffering. I know some people right now that's suffering for some bad headaches that love the Lord. Yeah? So the degree of mental and emotional suffering is determined by the value we place on what is lost or what is damaged or what is destroyed. I suffered mentally bad, man, when I lost my mother. But then I, I understood very clear I didn't lose her. Just temporarily. And, and that'll help you pull it back together to understand the truth. Temporarily. Okay. So you say, what's the purpose, man, of, of burdens and sufferings? Why do we got to go through this stuff? Well, it's to glorify God. The purpose for humanity altogether is to glorify God. Which means to manifest or display or express his life. When we glorify God, we are manifesting his life. We are bearing fruits of Jesus Christ. We are showing the life of Jesus Christ because we're living it. That gives him glory. So how then does he work in the middle of burdens and sufferings to achieve this overarching purpose, you say? Well, God uses burdens in our lives to take us beyond our own resources, I'm going to say that again. God uses burdens in our lives to move us and take us beyond our own resources so we can grow dependence on him. 2 Peter 3.18. If you want to look that up. This dependence on God, it provides an opportunity for, for a better and a bigger intimacy with him. Okay? And as we experience this intimacy... The display of his love, his life, his light becomes increasingly evident and it brings glory to him because people will see Jesus all in you. You can't miss Jesus when he's there. You can't miss him. And when you're shining the light of his glory, everybody sees it. You know what? That brings glory to him. And that's, that's our purpose here. So that suffering will lead to brokenness. And we talked about this some yesterday in the barn. Uh, I'm asking you to pause the video right now after you answer this question. What are the possible responses to suffering? I want you to read Acts 7.51 and 2 Corinthians 12.9. Pause and read that. Okay, I will check your answers later. Because suffering is painful. It's difficult, isn't it? Suffering stinks, man. One response is, I don't know, anger to the person who bought the suffering. Maybe your family, your spouse, your friend, I don't know, your teacher, I don't know. But but you want to get angry to that person because they brought suffering to you, right? Well, did you know God can also become the object of our anger? Since he's all powerful and able to prevent suffering. You could have stopped this, God. Why didn't you stop this? What kind of God are you, right? That's what you say. You could have stopped this and he could have. Why does the anger the anger will get projected towards God? Because he could have prevented that suffering. Anger nursed through constant mental reinforcement becomes bitterness. Okay? So, let me tell you what God wants. God desires a different response. You're going to write these scriptures down for you. He desire, he, What he wants from you is a, a response of brokenness and surrender. He wants you to become broken and surrender. Psalms 51, 17. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. Okay, brokenness is the conclusion that mine and your, that our resources are completely bankrupt. It's inadequate to meet our needs and provide the abundant life that he designed us for. Matthew 5, 3. So... 
the believers who are experiencing brokenness, you don't have a dysfunctional nature. You're coming to the conclusion that the flesh profits you nothing. And apart from Christ, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Okay, so we're going to leave it right there. And I want you to answer these questions up here. What burdens and suffering have you experienced? Think about it. Write it down in your notebook. And in what ways have burdens and sufferings brought you closer to God? You've all heard my testimony. Okay. Take these scriptures to the left and write them down and dissect them. And understand that God's not putting temptations on you. But burdens, he never said he wouldn't. Why is he allowed burdens? Burdens make you suffer. Why? Answer that right now in the comment section, please. I just explained to you, why does God allow suffering in your life? Not temptations. Suffering. Please tell me why. I want you to dissect that in your notebook. Why God allows sufferings. And come up with the time that you suffered. And did it bring you closer to God? Did it do anything? Did it, there you go. In what ways have burdens and sufferings brought you closer to God? I'd like to hear your testimony. Please write it in your notebook. Okay. And we're going to move on now so that you understand this clear. We get it cleared up. We move on to the next thing, the next thing, next thing. Because what I'm going to show you before we go into the tabernacle and the feast days is that you are here to have a personal, intimate relationship with the Father God. And you have to do that through the sacrifice, through the Son, Jesus Christ. And once you understand this personal, intimate relationship, then you'll understand why you keep the feast and would love to do so and celebrate with our God. So we're moving in towards the feast, but right now we're starting at the ground up. Your relationship with the Lord. All right. I want to thank some of you for what you've done. Thank some of you so much for helping us and uh, the super chats. Thank you on the videos where the super thanks. Thank you for your super thanks, y'all. Thank you for everything you're doing for us. And I appreciate you appreciating us. Thank you so much. God bless you. We love you. And we're here for you. Okay. Take your scriptures and write them down and dissect them and understand why God allows you to have burdens more than you can bear. But temptations, he'll always make a way of escape for you. All right. God bless you. In Jesus' name, make Jesus Lord of your life.